In this video, we'll learn how to balance chemical equations. The first thing we want to be able to do is write a chemical equation, which is a short way to show a chemical reaction using chemical formulas and symbols to represent the reactants and products. The reactants are on the left and the products are on the right. You can have two reactants yielding a single product, or you could have two reactants mixing together to form two products. You could even have three reactants and they are yielding a single product. You could even have a single reactant yielding several products. In chemistry, we have a really important law called the law of conservation of mass, which says during a chemical reaction, mass is not created or destroyed, but can be transformed into new combinations. Let's look at an example. Hydrochloric acid being mixed with sodium hydroxide. In the reactants, we have hydrogen, chlorine, sodium, and oxygen. In the products, we cannot have sodium, fluorine, and H2. Where did this fluorine come from? And what happened to the oxygen? The elements present at the start of the reaction must still be there at the end of the reaction. The correct product is NaCl and H2O. Notice that the number of atoms in each element is the same. In the reactants, we have two hydrogens, one chlorine, one sodium, and one oxygen. On the product side, we have two hydrogens, one chlorine, one sodium, and one oxygen. The total mass during chemical reaction will not change. The total mass before the reaction is equal to the total mass after the reaction. For example, if we mix 20 grams of HCl and 30 grams of NaOH, that's a total of 50 grams in the reactants. The products must also equal 50 grams. So it could be 10 grams of NaCl and 40 grams of H2O. Or it could be 20 grams of NaCl and 30 grams of H2O. Or it could be 25 of each one. Either way, the mass of the products combined needs to be 50 grams. Let's try an example. Mixing hydrogen and oxygen to make water. H2 plus O2 yields H2O. The reactants are on the left, and we have two of them, and the products are on the right. We only have one of them. On the reactant side, we have two hydrogens and two oxygens. On the product side, we have two hydrogens and only one oxygen. What happened to the other oxygen? This is not following the law of conservation of mass. It is tempting to just put a subscript of two right here, but H2O2 is a different molecule. It is not water, it is hydrogen peroxide. I'm sure you have seen it in a medicine cabinet. It comes in a brown bottle and you pour it on cuts and scrapes. You would not drink it, it is not water. So you cannot add a subscript there. You may want to just remove the subscript from the oxygen in the reactants side, but you do not find oxygen by itself in nature. It's a diatomic molecule that bonds to other oxygens, so you can't do that either. You are not allowed to change any subscripts because that will change the molecule, and we cannot do that. So we have a problem. The equation is not balanced because the number of reactants does not equal the number of products. This equation is not following that important law of conservation of mass. We need to balance the equation so the reactants equals the number of products. And all the atoms at the start of the reaction are still present at the end of the reaction. Let's see if we can figure this out. During a chemical reaction, atoms break their bonds and form new bonds with other atoms. I can make one water molecule by breaking these atoms apart and using two H's and one O to make one water molecule. But I would have this oxygen left over. But what if I had two H2 molecules? I could use these two hydrogens and bond it with the oxygen to make a second water molecule. So I have two H2s and one O2, and I'm making two H2Os. We can show this in our chemical formula by using coefficients. I put a two 
in front of the H2, and I put a 2 in front of the H2O. I could put a 1 in front of the O2, but that is not necessary. Now I should update our list. We now have four hydrogens on the reactant side and two oxygens. On the product side, we now have four hydrogens and two oxygens. Look at that. Everything is now balanced. This equation is now following the law of conservation of mass. The number of reactants is equal to the number of products. Every atom present at the beginning is still there at the end. Let's try another example. Remember that hydrogen peroxide I mentioned earlier? Well, that is H2O2. It is made of two hydrogens and two oxygens. Now, there's an expiration date on that brown bottle because over time, the hydrogen peroxide will break down into water and oxygen gas. On the product side, we have two hydrogens and one plus two oxygens equals three total oxygens. This equation is not balanced. And remember, we cannot change the subscripts. We are allowed to add coefficients. That just tells us how many more of a certain molecule we need. But we cannot change the molecules itself. So I notice that I can make this water molecule using part of our H2O2 molecule on the left-hand side. I can use an oxygen and two hydrogens to make that water molecule, but it will not balance the products on the right-hand side. I still have this oxygen over here and, and two of them over here, so I know it's not balanced. But what if I had a second H2O2 molecule? I could then make a second water molecule. I have to use the oxygen and the two hydrogens to make that water molecule. And look at this. I have an extra oxygen and an extra oxygen, which I can use to make the O2 molecule. Look at that. Everything is accounted for. Let's add the coefficients to the chemical equation and then update our list just to make sure. So we have two H2O2 molecules forming two H2O molecules and an O2. Let's update the list. There are now a total of four hydrogens and four oxygens on the reactant side. On the product side, we have four hydrogens and two plus two oxygens is four oxygens. So everything on the left-hand side is still here on the right-hand side. This equation is balanced. Let's try another. N2 plus H2 yields NH3. On the reactants side, we have two nitrogens and two hydrogens. On the product side, we have one nitrogen and three hydrogens. This equation is not balanced. We need to add some coefficients to balance this out. Remember, you cannot change the subscripts only add coefficients. Let's begin by trying to make the NH3. I have an N and only two H's, so I can't quite make an NH3. But what if I had another H2 molecule? I could use one of these hydrogens to complete my NH3. I also have one nitrogen and one hydrogen left over. What if I had another H2 molecule? I could use both of these hydrogens and the leftover hydrogen to make a second NH3 molecule. Visually, this looks balanced to me, but let's use the chemical equation to make sure. We will add a coefficient in front of the H2 molecule because we have three H2 molecules. That gives a total of six hydrogens and two nitrogens on the reactants side. On the product side, we have two NH3 molecules. We show that with a coefficient of two in front of NH3. Now that means we have a total of two nitrogens, 
and six hydrogens. And look at that, everything is balanced. Balancing chemical equations is not an easy thing to do, but it is fun. I like how it's very systematic and you go back and forth until everything balances out. Now there's no like step-by-step -step procedure, but there are some general tips that you should follow when trying to balance a chemical equation. Number one, find the chemical equation and identify the reactants and the products. Then list the kind and number of atoms on both sides. Finally, only add coefficients until the number of each atom is equal on both sides. Now here's some general tips. If the element is balanced, leave it alone. Start with something that's not balanced. It's usually a good idea to save oxygen and hydrogen until the end if you can. A lot of times they will just balance themselves out at the end. So the best place to usually start is with an element that is not balanced. Here's an equation for us to try. First, identify the reactants and the products. Next, what we want to do is list the atoms on each side. We have iron, sodium, and bromine. On the product side, we have the same elements. Now on the reactant side, I'm going to list how many of each atom there are. There's one iron, one sodium, and one bromine. On the product side, there is one iron, there's one sodium, and there are three bromines. So this equation is not balanced. Now the iron and the sodium are both balanced. I don't want to start there. The bromine is not balanced, so I'm going to start by balancing the bromine. If I add a coefficient of 3 in front of the NaBr, that will change this bromine to a 3, and it will balance out the bromine. But by doing that, the sodium becomes a 3, which means I've actually unbalanced the sodium. So now I go back to the right-hand side, and I say, okay, I have one sodium. How do I make this number into a 3? Well, I add a coefficient of 3 in front of the sodium, and this becomes 3. So now, iron is 1, sodium is 3, and bromine is 3. This equation is balanced. Let's try another example. The first thing we do is we determine which side is the reactants and which side is the products. The reactants are on the left and the products are on the right. The next thing we do is we list every element that we see. On the left hand side, I see aluminum, oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon. Now, I like to keep all the elements across from each other, even though the carbon seems to come first on the right hand side. I don't put carbon here because then I'm looking diagonally and that gets a little confusing for me. So what I do on the left hand side, I write the elements in the same order on the right hand side. Then what I do is I list how many of each atom there are on the reactant side and the product side. There's one aluminum, there's three oxygens plus two more oxygens over here. Uh, the hydrogens, we have three plus four, and carbon, there's two. Now on the product side, we have one aluminum, six oxygens, plus one more. We have nine hydrogens, plus two more in that water molecule, and we have six carbons. So we always want to start with something that is not balanced, and hopefully not oxygen or hydrogen. So I'm gonna start here with the carbon. Now we have two carbons on the reactant side and six carbons on the product side. So what I'm gonna do is add in a coefficient of three right here. And what this will do is it will change this hydrogen from four to 12. It'll change the oxygen from two to six, and it will change the carbon from two to six. So I've balanced out the carbon, and the aluminum is also balanced. What's not balanced is the oxygen. Now on the right hand side, I see six plus one, and on the left hand side, I see three plus six oxygen. So we have, we have uh, nine oxygens on the left hand side, and seven on the right. 
If I could make this into a three, then six plus three is nine and three plus six is nine. So I'm gonna add a coefficient of three right here. And that gives me my three uh, oxygens. It also will change the hydrogen from two to six. And nine plus six is 15, just like three plus 12 is 15. So this equation is now balanced. Here's another example. C3H8 plus O5 yields CO2 plus H2O. Same process, identify the reactants and the products, and then list the atoms that you find on each side. On the reactant side, we have three carbons, eight hydrogens, and five oxygens. On the product side, we have one carbon, two hydrogens, and two plus one oxygens. It's always a good idea to start with an element that's not balanced and not hydrogen or oxygen. So I'm gonna begin with a carbon. Now, if I place a coefficient of three in front of the CO2, that will balance out the carbon, but it will also change the oxygen from two plus one to six plus one, but the carbon is balanced. Now I look at the hydrogen, I have eight on the left and two on the right. And the oxygen, I have five on the left and seven on the right. So it looks to me like I'm gonna go with the hydrogen. So I'm gonna try to balance the hydrogen. We have two on the right and eight on the left. If I had a coefficient of four in front of the H2O, this becomes eight and this becomes a four. So now we have uh, three carbons, which is balanced, eight hydrogens, which is balanced, and the oxygen on the right-hand side is six plus four, that's 10. And look, if I add a coefficient of two in front of the O5, then this becomes 10 oxygens. So now everything is balanced. Here is one more example that we're gonna to do together. And then you will have several examples to do on your own. First step is always the same. We list the reactants on the left and the products on the right. On the reactant side, I see one silver, two carbons, three hydrogens. There are two plus four oxygens, two potassiums, and one chromium. On the product side, I see two silvers, two carbons, three hydrogens. Um, oxygen is four plus two, potassium is one, and chromium is one. What I always wanna do is start with an element that is not hydrogen or oxygen and not balanced. So I can have a choice here. I can start with the potassium, or the silver. And I'm gonna start with the silver. I'm gonna place a coefficient of two in front of this uh, chemical formula here. And what that will do is take our silver and multiply it by two. But it will also multiply the carbon by two. So we have four carbons. We will end up with six hydrogens. And uh, this oxygen will become not four plus two, but four plus four. Now by doing this, we have balanced out the silver um, and, uh, and that's it. And the chromium is still balanced. So uh, the next thing I wanna do is go to the right-hand side and try to balance that side. So I see that the, uh, the carbon's not balanced and the potassium is not balanced. I'm gonna avoid the hydrogen and oxygen, save them till the end. So I think I'll do the potassium. I have one on the right and two on the left. What I can do is add a coefficient of two right here, and that will change the potassium from a one to a two. But remember, it applies to everything after that, which means the carbon is also multiplied by two, the hydrogen is also multiplied by two, and the oxygen here is not four plus two, it's gonna be four plus four. But look at that. The silver is still balanced, the carbon is balanced, the hydrogen is balanced, the potassium is balanced, and the oxygen, four plus four is eight, and four plus four is eight. So everything is balanced. This equation is now balanced. Here are three examples for you to try. Pause the video and write the equations down on a piece of paper. You can then balance the equations and check your work. The answers will be provided at the end of the video. The first step is to list the elements. Then you add coefficients until everything is balanced out. Here are the answers. All these equations are now balanced. 